Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to continue on a series of videos here kind of explaining what are common terms that flight simmers will throw out, especially uh, around the Star Citizen community more so than say Elite Dangerous, of uh, features that whenever we talk about them a lot of people have no idea what we're discussing about. And today we're going to be discussing ACMI and using Falcon 4 BMS or Falcon BMS uh, to do that, which is a very realistic flight simulator, uh, military jet flight uh, combat simulator modeling the F-16. ACMI actually stands for Real World Acronym, uh, Air Combat Maneuvering Instrumentation. Um, this was started back in the late 70s, early 80s, the very early era of computers, and they would attach a bunch of uh, sensors to uh, aircraft doing mock dogfights above Nevada or California or wherever. Uh, and then they would take that data, download them to computers, and then the computers would render um, a very crude three-dimensional um, replay of that engagement. Now these were usually vector, I mean like two triangles, or maybe a tri triangle and a square, and if you were really lucky, uh, one would have been um, uh, like black, or I shouldn't say black, but like white and blue or something if you had a two screen monitor but a lot of that uh, a lot of things were monochrome in those days so oftentimes it would be two triangles like with a number one and a number two um, or underneath it it would give the pilots um, a call sign and then they would replay the battle and they could stop pause the battle at specific moments and it, it was really an excellent way of um, debriefing and providing instructions of pilots of what did you do wrong here, what did you do right, what could you have done um, maybe as a better evasive maneuver here or there or whatnot. Um, in the gaming world this has been a staple of flight simulators for years, for a couple decades now um, and it's just considered to be pretty well standard and today we're going to look at one that comes with Falcon 4 BMS by default uh, tape 00000, that's actually from uh, a recent mission I've flown uh, because it would record up to 50 megs of data. Um, they have a demo here, but I'm going to look at the AIM-120 evasion, and that's basically how do you uh, avoid getting hit by an AMRAAM missile. So this is what the AM, uh, ACMI looks like. We can tell this game was originally created back in the late 1990s because the file extension they chose to use is .vhs. But the file extension is just a set, really, of time and coordinate data uh, for different pieces of information, what's going on at every fraction of a second. Um, and the great thing about it is, let's say uh, you're part of an organization, uh, you and somebody else engages in a either mock battle or a real battle. You can send this file to another player, and they can open it up in their client, their game engine, or their game, and then view the dogfight, um, and then maybe point out, um, give tips and pointers of, oh, I see what you're doing wrong here or there or whatnot. But we can choose different views. Uh, we can go internal. This would be what it looks like roughly from the cockpit of the F-16 pilot, which is actually a player. Uh, you'll see it, it'll say one uh, Revenator, and this is an actual player. The FA-18 Hornet out here is an NPC, and you can tell by how it flies. Um, but you could choose to also view the battle from the F-18. Any of the missiles that are launched during the engagement. And then you can zoom in, zoom out, and you have options like a radar lock line. Like right now, this F-16 has this F-18 locked. Um, I have a bunch of information turned on, you know, we got options, and this varies from game to game. You know, how big do we want fighters and, and stuff like that to appear, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can just press play, move the camera around. Now the red and blue, uh, green trails here show wing position over time. And then of course we can fast forward in time reset, see what's happening, and something's goofed up here. I think it didn't set up the coordinates right. 
Still locked on. Okay, we're later in the battle. Now these two are... Let me, uh... I think it had to do with the magnification there. So, deploying chaff, deploying chaff flare. This guy's trying to maneuver for an advantage and a kill. Just did, uh, I believe, a high yo-yo there. Try to get in position. And right here we're going for the gun kill, I believe. Or we're getting very close to it. Still maneuvering to get lead pursuit. Inside turn, 175 knots versus 200 knots. So you get all this information still locked on. Maneuvering, maneuvering, maneuvering. He's got lead and goes for the kill. And then uh, dumping more chaff and flare. So depending on how long we want to put trails, uh, wing trails, you know, we can go back here and it will redraw those. So we could basically watch and see what happens by the maneuvering of each aircraft or spaceship. But this is really perfect and ideal for trying to figure out in those WTF moments what happened. How did you get killed? Um, not only that, but it's also an invaluable tool for support staff as well. Because then if you notice something that's wonky, you can send this file to support and then they can view it in their player and see what happened. And you can write up, you know, hey, give them a specific time code of the recording, you know, say at, you know, 13, 15, 41, 47, 46. I don't really think I squeezed off enough rounds to get it on target, but the client registered a kill or something. Whatever that may be. Um, if you want to try to accuse somebody of cheating, well, you can show what your client gave you as far as information and then of course it would be up to the support staff and those who have great uh, greater depth of knowledge or field of um, access to data you know maybe they can go back and verify what happened server side um, to server and, and what various clients are showing match uh, so from an, a, a bug reporting um, anti-cheating uh, viewpoint it's very very handy not only that, but you know, if you think a player is cheating, you can just always make the file publicly available and anybody who has the game can download it and view it and come to their own conclusions. Um, so if somebody's being accused of cheating and isn't, they're just a really good pilot, um, other people can view and say, hey, no, they're not cheating, they just killed you fair and square and this is how. Um, or if it does look like they're cheating, you know, conversely people can say, hmm, yeah, you know, something's not right here. So it's useful for all of that, but particularly I find it useful because then, again, you can share the file with somebody else in your organization, a friend or whatnot, and it can give you a second set of eyeballs to look on, look into what's going on or what went on, and what can you do better the next time or do differently the next time. Um, machinima folks, folks who want to create machinima videos. Well, you could do the action once and then, you know, reset and play the same scene over and over again, recording the video from different camera angles and things of that nature um, for use in Machinima. Um, and, you know, it would be great if you could hide this area and this area, but as far as that goes, you could also just cut those out in any um, decent editing software, um, go into Premiere or Final Cut and just add masks up at the top and the bottom and you're not trying to um, cut out an entire cockpit or something like that. And I would personally prefer to see this as opposed to the current third-party version, or, or third-person point, uh, third point of view in-game, because here you could still get those same beauty shots and engine and everything. Um, and while you may not be able to do it at that very moment, you can go back and better position your cameras and things of that nature in order to make and create those shots. Uh, and then the whole first person versus third person um, situation goes away because then third person shouldn't be available 
uh, in real time. If you want to go back, go review the uh, log file or the uh, ACMI file um, that was recorded during the combat. Um, you know, it's tape 00001 or however they end up with doing it. Um, and then you can go back and review and look at third person, uh, relive the, you know, glory kill shot as many times as you really want. So hopefully this explains what ACMI is and why it's a feature that the larger Star Citizen community um, and even Elite Dangerous community should request and want in their game. Uh, it solves a lot of the issues uh, when you have you know, the first person versus third person debates. Um, this is a way that you could lock everybody into first person and yet still provide them with that third person option uh, for beauty shots and whatnot. And unlike recording with a program like Fraps or Shadow Play or OBS, uh, Open Broadcasting Software, you know, whenever you do that, you only still get the video from one person's point of view. Uh, and sometimes it's still impossible to figure out what the heck happened in a given situation. Why is it that all of a sudden it seemed like you died in two shots? Well, if you can go back and look at a, uh, an ACMI type recording, you might see, oh, well, somebody snuck up from behind me and fired 50 missiles at me, and I'm dead. Okay, so I died in uh, a hail of missiles fire or cannon fire or, or whatnot. And, you know, oh, hell, I never even saw that guy there. Um, so that's pretty much all that I really have at this time. Uh, feel free to uh, leave comments or questions or anything else in the comment section below, and be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, share. If you find this value, uh, video to be valuable, uh, and I will continue to con uh, do this in a series of videos um, just showing different aspects uh, from the technical worlds of flight sims, uh, of things that if serious about making the best damn space sim ever, probably should include in, in terms of Star Citizen and would be kind of nice to have an Elite Dangerous as well. So, well, with that being said, I think I'll leave it there. and. Uh, Good evening, good night, good luck, and uh, see you next time.